Hi everyone, I'm Ryan MacDonald. I'm one of 660 people around the world who are astronaut candidates for the Mars One mission. Over the past two weeks, I've been receiving questions from people just like yourself all around the world that you want to see answered about the Mars One mission. And today, it's time to answer them. Okay, we'll get started then. First, we have some questions from Robert Latter about the Mars One Round 2 interviews, which I mentioned in the last mission update. Have you been told when and where your interview is? And would it be possible to make a video on your wad of paper or is it confidential information? So firstly, just let me preface this by saying that all Mars One candidates have signed a non-disclosure agreement regarding the specifics of the interviews at the moment. And you can understand why that is, because if someone has already had their interview and they then reveal specific details about it, what questions they were asked, that could then affect the objectivity of the interviewing process by people who haven't had their interviews yet learning that information. So I can't go into the specifics at the moment, but what I can tell you is that the interviews began on December 8th and they're still ongoing. So let's look. Ah, here we have one from... How come system restart? No. Imagine your team of four is slated to be the prime mission, but one of the four has a last minute change of heart and then doesn't want to go. As I understand it, the entire team is then scrubbed in favour of a backup team. Do you therefore think individual team members will be under immense pressure to make the trip, even if at a late stage they decide not to go? So you've hit upon an absolutely excellent point here. If a single person in one of the teams decides to back out of the process, the entire team, they don't get entirely kicked out of the training process, but they have to go back to the beginning with a new team member. So ways that you can potentially mitigate this problem that you've identified is the training program is so harsh with everything that could possibly go wrong going wrong, that it means that It gets to the point where it would actually be easier just to step on the rocket and get away from the harsh trainers than to continue in the training program. So as much as it is possible, Mars One wants to make it so that it's absolutely hell on earth to stay in the training program, so that if anyone had any last minute doubts, they would have already backed out by that point. And also there's the fact that You don't know if you're the prime crew until right at the very, very end of the process when you finally find out who is going to be the first to step onto the rocket. So I certainly hope this issue can be addressed, but yeah, I agree with you. There'd certainly be immense pressure not to back out if your entire group was depending on you. Ah, let's look at another from Robert Latt, who sent in many excellent questions. You mentioned that in the third round, you will be put into teams of between 10 and 15 people. If you were to advance into round four, would it be whole teams or individuals who will be put through? So I'll be the first to admit that off the top of my head, I don't know. It will be up to Norbert Kraft to decide that, but I would suspect that it will be individuals that will be put through. The reason being that if you had a team of 10 people and say eight of them put in an absolute excellent effort, they made it be the best team, but then two of them were just sat doing nothing or hurt the team dynamic, then for those two people to continue through at the expense of potentially other amazing candidates in one of the teams that didn't pass, that seems kind of somewhat counterintuitive. So I would suspect it would be somewhat team-based, but the majority of the selection would be based on individuals. But don't quote me on that. What next? Ah, here we have. The Wombat Guru asks, what does your family think of you participating in this program? So there's been somewhat mixed reactions. Generally, my family is quite supportive because I've never made any secret that I love space and I've wanted to go into space ever since I've been a child. And I didn't have the opportunity before Mars One came about to actually pursue that. It's, it's because in the UK, for example, it's not like over in the US where there's astronaut selection panels and things going on all of the time. In fact, we only just have one astronaut in the UK here and he's not even going up until next November. So I didn't really get my chance until recently to apply for this. And when I did, I went straight for it and my family wasn't surprised. But that being said, um, I do have a little sister who's two years younger than me, who I'm extremely close with and have been ever since I was really young. So she would really find it difficult. And I've spoken to her about it. And she said that she knows that it's what I really want more than anything to do this mission. And that if I were to be selected, she'd be willing to support me. So long as, of course, I keep sending her video messages and keep in contact with her. But I've said, yeah, I'll definitely do that. Okay, uh, let's look at another question from Robert Latter then. So, do you know if the interviews will be live? And if so, where will we be able to watch it? And if not, 
when and where will we be able to watch it? So, no, the interviews won't be live. They're being filmed by local film crews which are sent to each of the candidates. And therefore, the specific broadcasting arrangements will differ depending on each candidate and each country. But what I can tell you is that the earliest that you could expect to see material from the interviews appear will be around April 2015. And here's one from Kelkshires, which is a question about the launches. So Kelkshires says that, would the Falcon Heavy that is currently in development by SpaceX be theoretically capable of launching the Mars 1 habitats to Mars? And are there any alternatives to the Falcon Heavy? Or is it conceivable that any other economically feasible launcher will be developed in time? And where by economic feasibility, he means that the SLS will definitely not be economically feasible for Mars 1. Yeah, oh yeah, you're absolutely right about the SLS. Um, even if NASA would lend Mars 1 the SLS for it, it will just never be economically feasible. If we want to stay within the budget of $6 billion to pull off the mission to Mars, as far as I'm aware, the Falcon Heavy is the only option that we have. You can look at it in terms of technical capability, in that the Delta IV Heavy, which recently launched Orion into orbit, can launch around 29 tonnes into low Earth orbit, whilst the Falcon Heavy can do 53 tonnes. The Delta IV also costs $375 million per launch, whilst the Falcon Heavy is estimated to cost Mars One $125 million. Mars One will require 13 Falcon Heavy launches to accomplish its mission, but that's not required for the first few launches. The 2018 demonstration mission and the 2020 rover will not require the full technical capabilities of the Falcon Heavy. It's only with the six missions to Mars in 2022 that we require the Falcon Heavy. So hopefully the Falcon Heavy, which should have its first test next year, will have had many successful test flights before it's required by Mars One. And to summarise your answer to the question, yeah, basically we need the Falcon Heavy. That's as far as I can see it, the only option. One final question from Robert Latter. Do you make all your thumbnails or where do you get them from? So I assume this is referring to my thumbnails for the Mars One mission updates. And yes, I draw all of those myself. Uh, they're often inspired by Mars One official graphics or other things that I've seen on the internet. But yeah, I spend, I don't know, five hours or so before each video just drawing those. Because I think it adds a bit of a personalization to the videos. And okay, one final question from Togwak1 who says, with an average surface temperature of minus 60 degrees Celsius, or as low as minus 150 degrees Celsius on Mars, how would the habitat be permanently heated? And what about going outside? Are the spacesuits heated? Or do you only venture out during highs of zero degrees Celsius? And then he recommends taking a scarf. Well, okay, so let's look at heating options on Earth, for example. We can't use, like, gas or something really or just burn some oil or something like that on Mars that's never going to work so what we do is we generate electricity using the solar panels and we use that electricity in order to go through resistors which underlie the actual uh, kind of padding of the floor pads at the bottom of the habitat and when you send electricity through a deliberate resistive element by Ohm's law the power gets dissipated and turns into energy heat energy in this case which we then use to warm up the habitat and you can also try and keep in as much heat as possible by having plenty of insulation. So there's actually going to be a couple meters of regolith on top of the inflatable parts of the habitat where we'll be spending most of our time. And so that, as well as acting as protection from radiation, will act as thermal insulation to keep us warm. And in the spacesuit, yep, you're absolutely right. There will have to be some form of basic resistive heating inside of the spacesuits. They're, the currently designed for the spacesuits are being looked at by Paragon. And if you're interested in the actual specifics of the habitats, that's still being discussed. Uh, Christian von Bengsten is working on the design of the simulation habitats, which are going to gradually implement each of these systems. Uh, I suppose later on you could use heat pumps, for example, where you put a deep element far below the surface and then extract heat from below the ground in order to warm up the settlement. But yeah, to summarise, insulation, absolutely a must, and will convert electricity from the solar panels into heat. So I think that's all for the questions, but keep sending in your questions. I love to receive them. List them in the comments below and I'll be sure to answer them. Thanks for watching. Last time I asked you which video you'd like to see next on this channel, Orbital Mechanics 101 or Martian Supervolcanoes. I've tallied up the votes and it's 3-2 in favour of Orbital Mechanics 101, which will be coming out this Friday. I've also got a Mars One mission update coming out later in this month, but in the meantime, be sure to check out our featured videos over there on the right, Mars One Astronaut Candidates Live, 
and a video on SpaceX, which is going to be attempting to re-land their first stage booster on December 19th. Very exciting times coming up ahead. Until then, I'll see you next time.